In the previous video, we saw that we can use output cache in order to have a very simple mechanism for using cache in our .NET applications, but it has a limitation, and that is that by default, it stores the data in memory, in the memory of the process of the application. This has two consequences. The first one is that if you restart the application, then you are going to lose the data that is in cache, and that may not be ideal. And secondly, and very important also, is that if you have several instances of your web API, then they are not going to share the same layer for cache. So for example, one application may have some information in cache and the other application may have other information in cache. And that is a very huge issue because then clients may receive different data from the different cache of the different instances of the application. So how do we fix this? For this, we can use distributed cache. With distributed cache, we're going to have an external layer of cache for our application. In this way, if we, for example, restart the server or restart the application, then this is not going to affect the cache layer. And also, if we have several instances of our web API, then those instances can share the same service for caching. In this video, we're going to learn how to install Redis in our SP.NET Core application as a distributed cache service provider. By the way, if you want to learn more about minimal APIs, buy my Udemy courses today. I have a minimal APIs with Entity Framework Core course and also a minimal APIs with Dapper course. This one is new and in it we use store procedures. Link to these courses with a discount in the description of this video. So let's learn how to install Redis on SP.NET Core. Alright, so we are, we are in Visual Studio and the first thing that I want to do is to test the scenario that we just described a few minutes ago. I want to put a breakpoint here, as you can see I'm using output cache here. I want to put a breakpoint here so that we can press F5 to run our application in debugging mode and we're going to see that if I restart the server, then we're going to lose the cache information that we have. So let's come here to the HTTP file and I want to click on send request. Let's see that we have the breakpoint activated, so F5. And of course, if I come back here, we're going to see that we have the data here, as you can see here. So let me click on send request. We have the data again, but we didn't activate the breakpoint because we are serving this information from memory, from cache. So shift F5, F5, this basically mimics the restarting of the server, the restarting of the application. So now if I click on send request one more time, you are going to see that we are back at the endpoint. But that is not right because we didn't want to actually lose the data in cache. So what we can do is to use a external layer of cache like Redis. We have several choices for using Redis. The first one is to just install Redis on our local machine. For example, we can use Docker for that. Or the second option is to use a cloud provider. In my case, I will use a cloud provider because we have a free option that is very easy to use. So let's go to Google Chrome. And we're going to go to Redis IO. I'll click on try Redis. And I'll create a new account. I'll say accept. I'll create a new account. And I'll click on get started. I says here that I have to click on the email that they sent me to activate my account, so let me do that. So I just did that, now I'm presented with this screen, I can select a vendor like Azure for example, then I'll click on get started, and this will create a database for me, a free database that is very limited but that helps us do some testing. So this is in process, so I can click here, this is in process as you can see here, so while that is going on, let me come back to Visual Studio because I have to install a NuGet package for using Redis. So, manage NuGet packages. And we're going to install the following package. Microsoft SPNet Core Output Caching Stack Exchange Redis. So, install. I'll click on accept. Now let's come back here. Let me come back here. As you can see, this is done. So now I have to copy two informations from this page. The first one is the public endpoint, which we have here, as you can see, copy. Let's come back here to Visual Studio, let me come to a configuration provider like App Settings Development JSON. I have here a connection string and below this default connection, I can put Redis and let me paste this public endpoint comma password equal to and let's come back here and now I will look for my password because which is here, copy, come back here, paste. All right, now I have to come to the program class Setting up Redis is actually pretty easy, especially if you have already been using Output Cache. Let's see that. Let's come here. Let me comment this out. And let me say builder services at stack exchange, Redis Output Cache, options, semicolon here, options, configuration equal to builder, configuration, get connection string, 
Redis. And we get this Redis from here, from this App Settings Development JSON. And believe it or not, that's actually it. With this, we're good to go. So let me press F5. I want to make the same test again. So let me check that we have the breakpoint here. So F5, we're going to see that we can restart the web server and we're going to maintain the same cache. So let's see that. Because of course, Redis is an external layer that lives outside of our application. So this is running. So let's come back to the HTTP file. I want to click on send request. We're going to activate the breakpoint, of course, F5. Now, of course, this data is going to be in cache. Let me click send request. You can see that we didn't activate the breakpoint. Shift F5 to stop running the web server. F5 to run it one more time. So we basically restarted the web server. And now I want to click on send request. And you are going to see that we get back the information from cache. We didn't activate the breakpoint because we are getting the information from cache. So how do we see that information that is in cache? How can we interact with it? For that, there is a client called Redis Insight. Let's see that. Let's come back to, I wanted to actually come back to this screen. Here you can see a link open with Redis Insight. Redis Insight is a client that allows us to interact with our Redis databases. So let me click on open Redis Insight. In my case, I already installed this client, but if you haven't done so, you can install it from here. As you can see, you can download it and install it. In my case, it is opening right now. As you can see here on the screen, it's going to open automatically my database, as you can see here. And if we click here, you can see that says key with this name does not exist. That is because, as you can see here, this 2S means that it only had two seconds to leave. Of course, two seconds have already passed. And therefore, if I click on here, it is going to disappear. So let me come back here to Visual Studio. Let me send request one more time. We're going to activate a breakpoint because the cache has been expired. So F5, now the information is in cache. So let's come back here. Refresh, and you can see that we have this information here. And if I click on it, if I click on here, you can see that we have Felipe updated. This Felipe updated comes from, or is the same as this information that we have here, this information that we have here. So it is indeed the same data. Therefore, we were able to install Redis in our SP.NET Core application to have a distributed caching strategy so that the cache layer can live outside of our application. If you want to learn more about minimal APIs, buy my Udemy course today. It comes in two versions, the first one with Entity Framework Core and the second one with Dapper, in which we use store procedures. Link with the discount to these courses in the description of this video. Thank you.